we finished last week, we was looking at, we finished with those words in chapter uh, 22, verse 6. These sayings are faithful and true. <laughs> what we just sung about wasn't it? All my life, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. Many of us, I can't say that. I can't say that I've always been faithful or true. I can't say that the words I've spoken throughout my life have been true. But see, what the Scripture, as we ended last week in, in talking about our, our Lord's words, the God's Word, the precious Word of God, our Bible, we said this, that it's faithful. That means it's trustworthy. You can always count on it. That's what we ended in chapter uh, 22 and verse 6 last week. We, we finished these sayings as he's, he's speaking to John. Uh, all that's penned in this book, uh, and that's the book uh, Revelation that we are studying here, but it's, it, it applies to the entire Word of God, all of it, all 66 books of the Bible. They are faithful. That means they're trustworthy. They're trustworthy and they're true. That means every word is real. It's genuine. True. So that's where we finished that last week. We are talking about, and only God's word is that. 100% of the time. Faithful and true. We need something that's faithful and true in this life, right? We can't find it on the news, can we? You find it on the news today? No. We can't find that on the news, that people speak faithful and true words. So, Bible, God's Word, is faithful and true. And as we're going to look today, as we continue in verse 6, and it says this, I'll be, read the entire verse, and He said unto me, uh, these things are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent His angel to show unto His servants the things which must shortly be done. It says, Behold, verse 7, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. What is that roar? <laughs> this is the vacuum going. No, I think I think Isaiah's got something roaring. Yeah. Okay. Let's pray. There's something going on here. Let's pray. All right. I'm gonna pray, guys. Y'all ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. God, I thank you uh, for the, the praise being given to you. God, you are good. Your goodness says, uh, you really, in your mercy and grace, has watched over our lives. God, you've protected us. You've brought us to this place and time. God, I can say today that your word on the precious Bible is faithful and true. God, every, every, every word that's pinned down in it, God, we can trust. It's trustworthy. And God, we uh, pray that uh, each one, uh, God, will open their hearts and minds today to hear what they'll say for the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So we finished up with those words last week. The book of Revelation in itself, it, it, means, to, it means a revealing. We, we've shared that early on. Uh, God wants you to know. God's not hiding stuff from you. He's not hiding things from you. I know we don't know it all. Our brain can't, can, my brain couldn't hold it all. My brain can't contain it all. Uh, the Word of God is so vast, so deep. I mean, it's just impossible for us humanly uh, to, to do that. But what He has done here in this book, He has revealed history. He's revealed history. And that's, we, we see this. This is a history book. From beginning in Genesis, when God created. He cr created the heavens and earth. This tells us all about humanity. And, and that's why I give you that one of those reasons. I give you that paper when we're talking about humanity and the dating of the earth. See, you're going to either trust the Word of God or you're going to trust man's Word. You only have two choices in this world. You either trust what God says, what does say of the Lord, or you trust what CNN says, what uh, uh, evolutionists say. Okay, So evolutionists tells us, and this is taught in our public schools, I will condemn them for what they're teaching. They're teaching a heresy, uh, they're teaching lies to say that our earth is billions of years old. So, I trust and I believe the Bible. So this is, a, this is what God has revealed all things to us, including the age of the earth. 
And so this is how some of you that maybe have missed this, this is what I want you to see this morning. This is how we date the earth. We say the earth is 6,000 years old, right? That's what, And this is where we get those facts from. This ain't a hypothesis. This ain't, and that's an educated guess. And that's what you see in science a lot of times. You say, I have an hypothesis. Well, that's good. That's just your, what you think, ain't it? Sounds real educated, don't it? But all you're telling me is what you think, okay? And we really, you know, much as I love you, when it comes to something like you come up and say, well, the earth is a billion years old, I don't, I don't really care what you got to say. I trust the Bible. The Bible says it's 6,000 years old. This is how we get our dating method uh, here of the earth. And listen, guys, I'm, I'm learning a lot of things myself. I have learned a lot of things over the last three years with this Sunday school. And this is the exposure uh, to Ken Ham's organization and, and going to the art, going up there, uh, listening to his lectures and things like that uh, concerning creation. Uh, because if I don't believe God created, everything else in here would be a lie. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, it would have to be. You know, so I have to start when Genesis 1 and 1, I, I have to start with God. And we've said that many times. Uh, you know, they, they, people talk about, and the article I sent you this morning says this, and the end of the world is coming soon. Well, they might be right about that. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, unless it doesn't. And, and, and this, is what it, this is what it says. I mean, they identify these people as fr- false prophets and uh, pseudo-religious or something like that. But this is what they're doing. I read a little bit of it. How long do we have left before doomsday scenarios begin to play out? Well, that depends on who you ask. There's several articles linked to this article you can click on with the, the email I sent you. Highlighted several answers for the prominent politicians, activists who argue we must immediately take action or crisis will arise by 2030. Okay, they even put a date to it. By 2030, we'll have major stuff. Climate clock says we must make drastic changes. And what they're doing is uh, these advocates for, for uh, global warming and things like that, they say the, the planet's dying, which it is, it's been dying. We know that. Sin brought death to, to this planet. So we, we do know that. There's some truth in it. But what they're uh, pressing uh, President Biden to do is make all of these greenhouse and gas changes, and they believe that that's going to save the planet. And you read the article. And, and that, but that's man's thinking. They believe that they can uh, fix this problem. They believe they can fix uh, humanity's problem. And that's what they're saying by doing this, by making these, 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 uh, these drastic changes that we're going to save this earth. And it's a lie. It's an absolute lie. Uh, the Bible, and that's why when we're studying here, uh, Fisher, put that, uh, push that up, I ask you. Uh, we, we break it down. And I don't have all the seven C's um, pamphlets here, but we break down the. This is the history of of our of our nation, of our country, of our world, of humanity. Yeah, ever how you want to view it. creation? Uh, of course, we know God created in how many days? Six days. He rested on the seventh day. Those were twenty-four hour days, because we'll see. They'll so even some in Christianity. Some will say. One day, and they take the scripture I'm going to use today too, one day is a thousand years. And then they'll put, put that in there and say, well, you know, it could have been one day, it could have been thousands of years of creation in that one day. You see what I'm saying? They manipulate things like that. You'll even hear that in a, in a, 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 tr- a church. You'll hear that come from church. But we don't believe that. One, that's why I said he created in one, that's one 24-hour day, two 24-hour days, six 24-hour days he created on the seventh day he he rested. Corruption come into the world. Where'd that begin? Garden yeah, Garden of Eden with sin and Adam. That's, uh, that brought the curse to humanity. In, in Adam, all die. In Christ, all shall be made alive. Yeah. So we see that corruption, uh, catastrophe. What was the catastrophe, guys? You might tell me? The flood. I tried to get Jonah. He knows all seven of them. And I tried to get him to stand here and tell you all this. But he said, I can't do it today. I can't, here's the nerves of soil. He said, uh, he said, you just asked me last night. I said, but you already know it. A catastrophe, the flood. You know, mankind got so, there was so much wickedness here on the earth that God looked down, and, and we say it's wicked now, but it was terribly, it was wicked then. Now, wickedness has not changed. It's, 
there's periods where it's, this is a period where God looked down and he said, I see one. <laughs> He's seen one in Noah. One righteous man. One that wanted to do what was right. One that wanted to serve God. Noah and his family were spared in the ark. The ark's a beautiful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and how he, sp he has spared us through salvation. Uh, but that is part of this. This is the catastrophe, the confusion. Everybody says, well, where did all, all these... All these races come from. That's wrong. There's only one race. It's called the human race. It's one race. Every color of skin uh, is there's just more pigments or less pigments in the skin, and that's where we get the shades. But we're all the same people. It's one human race. The confusion at the Tower of Babel. That's where God confused the languages, and I, I can't really recite. I should have went back and looked, but. I know they say, there, well, there's thousands and thousands of languages now. Well, all of them have their origin from just a few. And they came from the Tower of Babel. So this is, this is history here. I, I remember the Sunday school let us, lesson give us the exact number of original languages that was from this time period. Christ. So we got a problem. we got a sin problem. Christ come on the scene. Christ come on the scene. He was born. Where was he born at? Is born to a virgin, right? He's born in to a virgin in Bethlehem. No, you're right, Miss Best. And and that's uh, God sent His Son. We have we have to believe this is the Son of God. God sent the Son of God, and He's the third person of the Trinity: God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So this is Christ came, and then we have the cross. One of the most one of the terrible deaths that anybody could die during that time was to be crucified on a cross. But this wasn't just anybody. This was the Son of God. And He came for a purpose. He came to shed His blood. There had to be a shedding of blood to have remission of sins, to have forgiveness. For us to be forgiven of our sins, there had to be a shedding of blood. He shed His blood on Calvary's cross. Yeah, absolutely perfect, royal, sinless blood so that we can, might be saved. That's why I mean you can have salvation and we can say we're a child of God this morning. It's only because of the cross. John shared with this lady's life this morning that just rejected salvation that you know they really feel like it's about being good. I can be a good person, but a good person won't get you into heaven. It won't get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's only through the cross. And then we come down here to this word consummation. And this is where really this is a we're seeing consummation in Revelation. And really, it's in this, this one statement sums it all up. I know that involves a lot of things, but Revelation 21 and 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. The consummation of all things. And, and we might say a little bit more of that, but that's, that's what we are seeing here. Everything's new. Yeah, everything's new. And we'll say a few more words about that as we get into it. But I, I wanted you all, I thought as I went through this, you're going to hear these things in the world. The world's coming to an end. All these things. <laughs> we already know what's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. God's Word is faithful and true. When I say it's faithful and true, I'm saying you can trust it. That is super important because if you can't trust His Word, you're going to be confused about everything else in life. When you see things like this, you're going to jump on and say, oh my goodness, the world's coming to an end. You know? I need to go buy 25 cases of toilet paper. I'm not saying you have to be prepared, but, you know, i got to build me a bunker, you know, hide in it. And they say, that's silly. You don't hide for God? We are, guys, we already know how this is going to end. You don't have to worry or fret or when you see these things in the news, you don't have to say, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? No. We already know what's going to happen. I don't have to doubt what's going to happen because I trust His Word. There's nothing they can tell me. I already know it. And you do too. And that's what this beautiful book, this beautiful picture that He gives us here, that He's allowed us a glimpse into heaven. To see a new heaven, a new earth, a paradise, uh, the streets of gold, the throne of God, the pure river of life flowing from it. 
uh, the tree of life on east side of the river, the streets of gold, the walls of Jasper of that great city, 250 foot thick, uh, thick, 12 gates always open, one solid gate of pearl. He's given us a beautiful picture of the new heaven, new earth, where the consummation has taken place. Everything has been made right that was wrong. There's no more curse. We know only righteousness dwells in this place that we're talking about heaven. So we're coming to the close. The description of heaven has been given unto us. And, and we've seen that in the latter parts of the chapters. And, and we've seen part of it in chapter 22. I told you the first five verses was or should, could have, have been actually, don't worry about those chapters and dividers. They're actually part of that description of our new heaven and new earth. Uh, what's there, what's not there. Uh, so we'll see there's no more curse. So there's no curse in heaven in verse 3. We see that everything's been uh, made right by God. We have a new heaven and new earth. And it's been made for those that in verse 27 that their name in the latter part is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's key. If you want to see this, your name's got to be there. Amen. Amen. So that's important this morning. So the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was re he revealed this to us. He revealed this to His people. Uh, it, it's, and, and some say that the book of Revelation is of the things which are and the things which shall be. And some people even divide it up like this. The book has been presented in a threefold way referencing time. It's, a, it's the time which is, the time which was, and the time which is to come. So this is our life. This is what's going to happen, not just for us, not just for the born again. It tells me what's going to happen to the sinner that rejects salvation. Ultimately, they'll be called before the great white throne and they'll be cast into a lake of fire. See, now we've got to either trust all of it, we've got to trust all of it. We can't just say, well, I trust this part, and that part's not true. God's word is all of it's true. All of it's faithful and true. And so when we look at this this morning, we looked at the seven seas up here, creation, consummation. We looked at Revelation 1.1, and this is what uh, we see also there. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had been passed away, and there was no other sea. We looked at that, and then we come to verse 26. And the Lord God and the holy prophets sent His angel. How do we have this book? How do we get this book? How do we get the precious Bible? We say it's the words of God. So how did that happen? If I'm going to trust something, i, I got to trust where it came from, right? i got to know who the author is. Where did it originate from? So we see here in the Scriptures, we get another glimpse. And there's many Scriptures that give us this. And the Lord God and the Holy Prophet sent His angel. We look in verse 6 there. And the Lord God sent His prophet angel to show unto His servants the things which must shortly be done. And I said to you, God's not hidden this from you. Other scriptures support. God wants to show you through the Word of God the things which must shortly come to pass. And He said this also in 2 Peter 1.21. For the prophecy came not of all, in old times by the will of men. This is not something that a man sat down and penned. I think I'll write a Bible. Huh. See, there's no way possible this book could been, ever been penned by a man. Because... I can't even tell you what's going to happen in the next five minutes of life. Can you? You tell me what's going to happen once I, once I dismiss this service, what's going to happen? I don't have a clue. But time and time again, I read in the Bible, you'll have a, you'll have a prophet over here in the Old Testament prophesy about something, and then 2,000 years later, guess what? We have a Messiah. And, and that, you know, this right here, this Christ, it was foretold. The Messiah is coming. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. They even said He's going to be born in Bethlehem. I could never tell you that. And no man could tell you that. That was God. God, the Holy Spirit, moved on these men. They spoke and prophesied about these things. They pinned it down in the Bible. See, there, there's no way humanly possible a man could tell you 2,000 years before this took place, Jesus is coming. There's no way. And then at that... Tell you that he's going, he's going to die on the cross. The lamb's going to be slain. His blood's going to be shed. There's no way. See, that's God. That's the Holy Spirit of God moving. And, and we're going to see that only in the scripture here where, where it says this. God sent the, He sent his angels and they showed. We've seen God reveal 
uh, he revealed here to John. All of these things we see in this book, but that's not the only place. God sent his angels many times. This is not new. God just didn't show up yesterday and start working in humanity. He's working, he was working here way before me and you. We see Jacob's ladder. You know, in the story of Jacob's ladder. Y'all, y'all hear that? He's wrestling with the angel. You see a, a ladder descending out of heaven. And he said he had this view of, of, of angels ascending and descending. You know what that represented? God working on the earth. God's actively working here. See, God works in a spiritual world. We can see that. Now. That's where we have a problem. Because like, I, I like to see it. I had to see it to believe it, right? But God works. His Holy Spirit moved on creation back in Genesis from the very beginning. It's things that we, we can't see with the human eye. God here, he, he moved on these prophets. He sent His angels to speak to these prophets to show them the things that's going to come to pass. And He said to pin it down. They pinned it down in the precious Bible, the Word of God. It didn't come by, and that's what 2 Peter 1 21, it didn't come by the will of man, but by, listen to this, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved, moved by the Holy Ghost. Now that, that word Holy Ghost scares Baptist people. You're going to talk about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit working, but there's nothing to be afraid of. When you receive salvation, the Holy Spirit dwells in the believer. He's one that shows me and reveals things to me, teaches and leads me. Indeed. He does all the things in my life. I can understand the Word of God without the Holy Spirit revealing truth to me. So here we see the Holy Spirit. These men, they spake. They were moved by this Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. He's not, this person is not less than God. He's equal to God. Okay? This is the teachings that we teach. It's back there. You'll see it in our beliefs back there. If you get a pamphlet on our church, what we believe. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit. That word moved, man, it, it, it literally has this idea of being carried along. We use this word in our Baptist churches. They was led by the Holy Spirit. You ever, you ever wonder what that means? Right here it is. Yeah, in 2 Peter, we see that. God, that's God, God moved on that person to start a ministry. God moved on the hearts of people to start a ministry. See, not by will of men. The Scripture didn't come by will of men. The Holy Spirit moved. That literally means they carried these men along to show them what they need to prophesy, what they needed to say. Thus, we have the Word of God. God moved on them. That's important. You have to believe that. If you don't believe this is the Word of God, if you believe this ain't the, uh, the words of God, you, you won't believe that what's in it. You won't be able to trust what's in it. Why? Because if it was penned by a man, you can't trust a man. I'm sorry, you can give me the best man, the best moral man you think in this world. And I would say the same thing about him. You can't trust man. It's impossible for man to write this. But what God did is move on, on the hearts of men and the minds, literally carrying them along being led by the Spirit of God to stand in synagogues and stand before nations like Israel and condemn them and say, God's going to judge you. How did these men do that? I, I mean, I wouldn't stand, if I could stand up here this morning and I said, God's going to judge every one of y'all tomorrow. A great plague is going to come on y'all. Y'all would say, <laughs> what's that fool talking about up there? And that you would be right. If God didn't give me those words. But see, what happened was those prophets that stood in the Old Testament said, God's going to judge your sin. And in some cases, they would tell them exactly what God was going to do before God did it. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. See, God moved. It's the only way God has to be the revealer of the next day, of the next minute. Nobody, no man can do that. God moved on them. And that's important for us when we're trusting the Scripture. Why am, I, why am I adamant about this? Because there's going to be some professor, there's going to be somebody that you meet in soul winning, and they're going to be educated. You're going to come to them one day. They're going to be educated, very literate, and, and they're, going to, they're going to attack you. They're going to attack you. They're going to attack what you believe, and how are you going to defend it? If you don't educate yourself, if you don't get in the Scriptures, 
We talked about that this morning, getting, getting in the Word of God. If we don't hide the Word in our heart, and I believe God to give it to us, I do. But He wants us to study. He wants us to, he wants us to hide it in our hearts because when we go out soul winning, I promise you, I've had people tell us, we've just went in the head to head. How do you know, Craig? Hey, there ain't no hell. If you go talk to a Jehovah Witness, you're going to what are they going to say? The hell in the scripture, Shoel, is only referring to the grave. Just the grave. There is no hell. That's what Jehovah Witness is going to say. They don't believe there's no hell. So when you go to witness to a Jehovah Witness, you better have your guns loaded. If you're going to sit down and talk to them about it, you better know your scripture. I'm just trying to prepare you. Why? Because we need to hide the word in our heart. We need to pray. And we can, but I want to say this you can trust what you're hiding. That's what this is about here in the scripture. That's why God is telling us the words are faithful and true. Okay? Why? Because the Lord God and the holy prophet sent his angels to show these things to his servants, the things which must shortly come to pass. That's all God thinks. They ain't got nothing to do for me and you. So you can trust that the word's faithful and true. You can, I say you can, def, you can be a defender of the faith. And you won't have to do it. And does God need us to do it? No. But does He want us to do it? Yes, He does. He wants me to equip myself. He said, rightly divide the word of truth. So I'll know. So when I go, I don't have to be ashamed. That's what the scripture says. I don't have to be ashamed because I've prepared myself to go out and share the gospel and tell somebody the truth. Because somebody's going to come to you and say, 6,000 years old, are you kidding me? How did you get that? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? Where do you get your number? So we have to equip ourselves. And this is what, here he's coming to the end of John, and he's just saying to John, he's saying, you let them know that this comes straight from God. The God out of heaven, the Creator God, and he said, I want to show it to you. Why? Because it's going to be done in a short period of time. Ooh, short period of time, huh? And that's where you'll get these people say, well, good gracious, it's been billions of years. And even at that, I say, well, it's been 6,000 years. Where is he? We had scoffers in, in, in the Bible. We have scoffers. Scoffers is people say, where is that Messiah? Where's the one that's going to come back and judge me? Where is he? Tell him to come on and judge me then. You say, people ain't that bold. They're that bold. They're that bold in our society today. So, he moved, God moved on them. That was, he, in verse 20, he, showed, he wanted to show us. He wanted to show us what? The beginning of life and the end. Uh, not for the believer, for the lost person, for the world. To know what's going to happen in humanity. Those that you missed it last week, you listened to the message. Are there going to be animals in heaven? We answered, I answered all these questions. According to the scriptures last week. We're going to rule and reign with Christ, right? All of you is here. We said, we're going to rule and reign with Christ. So what are we going to rule and reign over? What are you going to rule and reign over? Good question, ain't it? I answered those questions. Let's go back and listen to the message last week. Right? right, Rosa? We got it. So God didn't leave me guessing. I used the scriptures, and they give me the answers. Guys, when I say the Bible holds all the answers to life, I sincerely mean it. The scriptures have all the answers that you're looking for. We're searching for. Sometimes I just don't want to hear the answer from this past. I want to go do my thing. And that's the problem. I want to go my way. God, I, I know that's a good way, God. But I, I think I know, I think I, I'm going to go this way over here. I think I got a good way to go. You know? And that's, that's my, it's, I have the same issue you got. My, the worst, worst problem I got is me. I always think it's somebody else. Truthfully, the worst problem is me. You know, in every situation, it's usually me and myself. I have to look at me first. The scriptures reveal to me who I am. That's not a pretty picture. <laughs> That's why it's hard to read the scripture, ain't it? We looked in a study book. I give Courtney a copy of it. I took a copy of it, and I said, "You read that, and I'm gonna. Get a, I'll read it out here." Well, I read the first page or two, and I come back to it. I said, well, there's something out there in the first page. I, I really wasn't doing. <laughs> not doing, or whatever that seems. And it says, I, if I'm not willing to do this, I, I, can't, I don't even need to go forward in the book. So I left the book sitting there, John. 
Don't we do that? Oh, I'm the only one, I guess. I'm the only one. I didn't want to just ignore it and continue the book like I was doing it, and I'm really not doing it. You want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that either. Instead. We would say that would be hypocritical, wouldn't it? Right? So when, I, when God's words, it reveals inside of me that I don't want to see. But God's word is true. It's faithful. We have to believe that God's showing us whatever he's showing us for, for us, molding us to look more like who? The Lord Jesus Christ. A bride that's prepared for her husband. How important is it to understand and trust the Bible? Now, I pose that question as, uh, how important is it to understand and trust the Bible? The prophecies that's written in this book, and we're getting all this in verse uh, 6, the prophecies are faithful and true. How important is it to believe that one verse? How important? So when I thought, I thought about that, this is, this is Satan. Satan's always on attack, right? He's always, even though you're a child of God, the intensity of his attack is, can be even greater than on a lost person. He's already got them. They're in bondage. But for us, you're trying to live right. Satan's going to say, oh, okay, but oh, I'm so glad Miss Betsy's a Christian now. Satan will never say that. This is what Satan does. 1 Peter 5, 18, you mark it in your Bible. If you want to, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, you know your adversary, that's actually a legal term. That's an opponent, uh, the one that's against you. It's an opponent at, at law. That's what adversary actually means. And, and he says here, it's the devil. Now, the devil means a slanderer. It means a, a false accuser. That's who the devil is. He's a slanderer. He's a false accuser. And, and this is a, if you, if one, this is 1 Peter 5, 8 that I'm reading. As a roaring lion, speaking of the devil, walketh about seeking who, whom he may devour. It's a picture, that's a picture of Satan, the devil. So, he's a roaring lion. You see, I always picture that roaring lion and what that little innocent antelope over there, y'all see it on the TV. And that roaring lion comes out and <laughs> eats the antelope. Y'all see that? Any of you see that? Mama one? Yeah. So, this is what he, 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 he's on the prowl. Satan's always, it, it has this idea that he's always watching you and following you. That's what it has the idea of. Because when somebody's on the prowl, when an animal's on the prowl, they're looking. They don't take their eyes off of it. They're looking at their prey. You notice that? They don't look. They don't. Satan's focused on his prey. So as a roaring lion, Satan's walking about, him, his demons, he's got a third of heaven. The, he took a third of the angels from heaven. How many is that? I don't know. It's probably a lot. It, gives, it says a third. They're walking about watching you. What are they looking for? They're seeing how what they might destroy. What they Now, they can't do anything about your salvation. I'm not talking about that. You don't lose your salvation. No man can pluck the child of God out of his hand. He can't take you. But that roaring lion is looking. How can he destroy the marriage? One of your children. One of our precious children. He's, wa he's watching our children, Mr. Paris. Even when we can't have eyes on them, guess what Satan's doing? Right? He's watching your girls. He's looking for an opportunity to throw some doubt in their minds. 6,000 years, are you kidding me? If he can get you to doubt the book, the Word of God, if he can get you to doubt creation, if he can get you to doubt 6,000 years, You'll begin to doubt everything about your, your, your Bible, everything about your Christianity. Right. He begin, he's, he's watching you guys. Fisher, he's always watching you. Satan's always watching you, and he's looking for an opportunity to devour you. He wants to destroy your life, John. He wants to destroy Miss Betsy's life. This is her adversary. So, we... Really don't have time to look at it today. We're going to stop. We think we think about this adversary. He's trying to destroy. He's trying to tear down. Not just that, our church too. Not just that. Uh, Ephesians. Uh, I was going to go over. We, that talks about putting on the whole armor of God in Ephesians chapter six, verses ten through eighteen. We did a full study on that a while back, hadn't been too long ago, about uh, final, final, it starts out finally, brethren. 
be strong in the Lord. We, we can't fight this battle. But he gives us armor to put on to fight. Why did he give us that? He knew we was going to be fighting. God knew that we was going to need armor to put on. But one thing he said in verse 18 was, he talked about making supplication and prayer. And, and I fall way short in this, John. And, and it says to pray for all, the, all of us, all the saints that's fighting the battle. If there's one thing we need to be here, I'll say it again, is encouragers. We need to be encouragers. We need to be lifting each other up. But not just that. When I, when I, when I open up the altar to pray, you know, you may not have prayed for your brother all week. Maybe you ain't even thought about Miss Betsy all week. But here she sits here today. You might not even thought about praying for her today. But see, when I open the altar, what I'm saying is, you have that opportunity. Maybe you hadn't been able to pray. Maybe you hadn't had time yet to. I know life. I understand life. You can, come, you can pray for her today. I don't know what's going on in her life, but God does. And, and, and when we're in a battle, when we're in this war, and, and we're fighting, God gives us tools. We have an adversary that's always watching us, but we have the Word of God. The Word of God is what we fight our battles with. As Jesus was tempted and first went into the ministry, with each temptation, say, say Jesus was tempted, the Son of God. He was tempted by Satan. He was tempted, but with each temptation, what did he use? The Word of God. So it always comes back to the Word of God. If you don't believe these prophecies are faithful and true, and these things here will shortly come to pass, are you ready? Are you prepared? Miss Courtney, come on. Stand with me, we'll pray. Uh, are you prepared? Do you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life for sure this morning? Stand with me. Never have bowed, never eyes closed. I'm going to open up the altar again. The altar, I say I'm going to open it up. It's God's altar. It's always open. I, I, that's really not even a correct statement to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the altar. The altar is always here. God always is wanting His children to come and talk to Him. He's always wanting His children to come and pray. He's always wanting to hear from you. You know? You have an adversary out there that's looking to devour you, your wife, your kids, your family. I, I think we should pray. I think we ought to seek God. We ought to seek Him and seek His protection, you know? I got two boys down there, young boys, and oftentimes we think, well, they, they're growing in the Lord. And they are. 